So I'm super excited to be here. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to the next slide if you don't mind. So I'd like to talk to you just for a few minutes this morning about somebody that, that I consider one of our nation's absolute heroes. I'm going to talk to you just for a few minutes this morning about currently Senior Master Sergeant Riley, part of the Special Operations community. He's down at the Joint Special Operations Senior Enlisted Academy as we speak. As you can see from the slide, he is a 2006 12 Outstanding Airman of the Year. He's also a Silver Star recipient and a Purple Heart recipient. In my mind, the folks at March Madness, they're not heroes. Did you hear what I just said? The folks at March Madness, they're not my heroes. Folks like this, America's finest, willing to lay it all out on the line, these are our nation's heroes. Huh? So let me tell you a little about Sergeant Riley. And I do have the excerpt from his silver star. So mentally, make a picture with me in your mind about this. Go to Afghanistan. The year is 2005. The day is April 11th. He, they insert him and his team into a mountainside in Afghanistan. They immediately begin to take fire. Immediately begin to take fire. And listen to what they said. The majority of enemy fire was coming from down the hill an extremely steep cliff. Immediately, Master Sergeant Cooper and Tech Sergeant Riley assaulted down the cliff in the direction of enemy fire. In the direction of enemy fire. That's America's finest. You see, we don't run from a fight. You start a fight with the United States and we'll finish it. They started firing at us. We ran to where that enemy fire was. That's America's finest. During the assault, Master Sergeant Cooper was critically wounded in both legs and Technical Sergeant Riley was pinned down approximately 100 meters down the cliff and isolated from additional detachment members. Lock on. Even though Technical Sergeant Riley was shot, he continued, he continued to return fire. They started shooting. We ran towards the gunfire. As he was running down the cliff, shooting, he was physically shot. The guy next to him was critically wounded in both legs. And he continued to return fire. I love the common denominator that we have in this room. And that's the unlimited liability clause that we swear to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we are prepared to lay our lives. This community... The people in this room, the leaders, you great leaders, we have the common denominator prepared to lay it all out on the line for our nation. I read a very good book, a very good book, and one of the passages in that very good book said there is no greater love, there is no greater love than one prepared to lay down their life for their friends. And us, this community, says we do that on a daily basis, and he is demonstrating that to you in this passage. During the lulls in, in the heavy machine gun fire, Tech Sergeant Riley treated Master Sergeant Cooper's wounds, saving his life, and continued to control the rotary wing and fixed wing aircraft controls fires against the enemy. So during the lulls in the fire, he is now calling in airstrikes. He is putting tourniquets on the guys next to him's legs to save his life, and he still continues to return fire while being wounded himself, while being shot himself. This, this lasted for three straight hours. For three straight hours, America's finest is shot, returning enemy fire, calling in airstrikes, treating his battle buddy right next to him for tourniquets and everything else for three straight hours. Put this in perspective for me. Time hack right now is about 8.04. Check your, check your watches at 11.04 and remember for that entire duration, for three hours straight, he was returning fire, calling in airstrikes, and treating his battle buddy next to him. At one point, the pain got so bad, the article talks about he sat on his leg to make it numb. He, he, he sat on his leg. He's returning fire. He puts his leg down on the floor, sits on it to make it numb so he can continue to return fire and do the things that he does. That is America's finest. The end of the citation reads this. 
due to the standalone actions of Technical Sergeant Riley, his medical expertise, marksmanship skills, and proficiency for controlling aircraft, Master Sergeant Cooper is alive today. We don't look, need to look any further than, than right here, the folks within this room, the, the folks in the exercise, to recognize America's finest. Next slide. So what does this mean to you? What, why am I here? Why am I giving you this message? Well, I reached out to Sergeant Riley uh, about a month ago, and I said, Sergeant Riley, uh, I knew him from previous locations. I've been at Sergeant Riley. I'm going down to this joint exercise down in Fort Bliss, and I'm responsible for, for teaching some FMers down there. I'm uh, responsible for uh, inserting myself into this exercise, and I asked him, sir, what message would you have uh, for this community? What message would you have, Sergeant Riley, for folks just like us? And this is an excerpt from the email that I received back to him. At some stage in this email, it transitions from being an email to what I consider warrior poetry uh, because it's absolutely beautiful and it's a message that we must, must, must absorb. He says, of course I remember you, Master Sergeant Davis. Why would he remember me? I'm 6'8". I mean, <laughs> that's not because I did anything special there. I'm 6'8". He said, I discuss all the things that I was trained to do, the equipment I had on my body, the WPNs, the radios, and the incredible amount of training and money it took me to get, get to the fight. If he had a radio on him, if he had training, we contracted that. We purchased that, the FM community. Without the dough, you can't go. If there is no money, there is no mission. He says, I discussed the assets I had overhead and the support and training required for each of those aircraft to arm, launch, and fly, along with the infrastructure to support the sustained operations. Now, get ready for some warrior poetry, because this is where I get fired up. This is the transition right here. And then he said, and continue following the chain back to nearly every job in the Air Force. He just linked, and it was beautiful, warrior poetry. He just linked every single job in the Air Force or in the military to, every, uh, to his ability uh, to, to, to do what he does as a special operator. He says the lowest man on the ground gives him the ability to do what he does. He says basically here that the documents that we're, pro we're processing here at OCSJX enable him to do the things that we do. It's it. He says uh, the infrastructure support, support uh, and support operations and then continue following the chain back to e nearly every job in the Air Force. It's easy to do because war is what we're organized for. People just lose sight of that bigger picture. It is, it is very easy for our community, the acquisition community, to lose sight of that bigger picture. But we must never forget that every single thing that we do within this acquisition body, within this community, supports war fighters like this. It's hard to do. Uh, it, it's hard to feel like we're a war fighter when you're never exposed to the fighting, but that's exactly the value of having a powerful military. The more people we can keep out of harm's way, the more successful we will be. Everything leads to the pointiest tip of the spear. Everything that we're doing at this exercise, the men and women, America's finest that you will, that you will see today, point to the direct tip of the spear. Yes, we may not be out on the battlefield putting hot lead down range, but everything that we do points to the sharpest, pointiest, most deadly tip of the spear. I bought with me a weapon. Don't, don't get crazy on me. I bought with me a weapon, and it's a weapon of this exercise. And it's a weapon of this exercise. It is. The first part of it is, a, is an SF Form 1034. You all know that's a what? It's a payment voucher. If you flip it over, there's a contract involved with this. This is our weapons within this exercise. These are our weapons within our community. These, these we use as weapon systems. Got it? These we use as weapon systems. So as you travel around this exercise and you see these people pushing these documents around, these are more than documents. These are weapon systems. Money is a weapon system. This acquisition process is a weapon system. And we must never lose sight of that. I told you I would be brief, rather be brief. I, t I think I've been a little too long. 
um, and I won't delay you anymore. I encourage you to, to enjoy your breakfast as we transition into this, but please don't ever forget that everything that our young men and women do lead to the pointiest tip of the spear, and they must never, ever lose sight of that. So thank you very much. I'm Master Sergeant Davidson. Have a good day. <laughs>